where the two flows meet. And here we constructed the model of the river confluence. Just some fundamental questions that we have about how confluence is mixed. I think this was a very exciting project. Rivers are one of nature's main assets. They are the living veins of our planet. Scientists view rivers as a part of the larger networks of flowing streams. The locations and the networks where streams join one another are called confluences. Flows merging at the confluences may differ in volume, speed and quality of their waters. Interactions between merging flows and the rate at which the two flows become mixed are of greater importance for water quality and ecological conditions in the river networks. In this film we shall look at what leading professionals are doing to further the currently limited academic knowledge and how river flows merge at confluences. The mixing uh, concept is something that we don't know a lot about. Um, some confluences mix very rapidly um, in a very short uh, distance. Uh, the two rivers mix very rapidly, so we get rapid mixing at these sites. And then in other cases, the two flows, when they come together, do not mix, um, and they stay separate for long distances uh, downstream of the confluence. So why this happens isn't really understood very well. In order to understand mixing better, three research teams have created an international collaborative program. This program includes field measurements on the confluence and natural rivers, field-based experiments on the physical models of confluences, and numerical modeling of mixing using large eddy simulation technique. The synergy of expertise in this program is strengthened by advanced expertise of the team leaders. Professor Bruce Rhodes from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in US of A is a physical geographer who's been carrying out field studies of confluences for 30 years. Dr. Alex Scudolo from the Institute of Freshwater Ecology and Inland Fisheries of Berlin in Germany develops field experimental approaches to fluor hydraulics problems for more than two decades. Professor George Konstantiniescu from the University of Iowa has 20 years experience in large eddy simulation of environmental turbulent flows. Dr. Tatiana Sokodolova and Quinn Lewis are the postdoc and PhD students in this program. We are in Illinois at the confluence site where the Kaskaskia and Copper Slough meet. This is one of several sites in Midwestern US at which Bruce and Quinn are carrying out the field study. At each field site they collect velocity, temperature, turbidity and conductivity at five to seven cross sections spaced uniformly along the river's reach. Okay, Quinn, next vertical. Okay, uh, 3.5? 3.5, Okay. Yep. Each cross-section measures several locations that are uniformly spanning the river's width. Each of these locations is a vertical profile composed of five points measured one after another over the flow depth. In order to understand how different factors affect mixing processes, the measurements are repeated at different hydraulic conditions, such as low water and high water. Throughout this, the measuring placements stay in the same position to collect localised data. However, it is hard to create any general conclusions about other confluences which may differ geometrically. Because of this, they have to use different field sites which allows them to explore the effects of other factors, such as what will happen when the junction angle is more acute or the riverbed's morphology is more complex. An important part of our project is being able to um, visualize using um, an unmanned aerial vehicle or drone the pattern of flow at the surface of the confluence so we can see where the water's moving, how it's interacting, and where it's mixing. This is the seeding material, material we use for PIV. Um, we use this because it's relatively uniform, it's easy to throw up in the air and spread, uh, and it's very easy to see from the drone. Uh, 
um, this is the video we're actually getting from the drone. So if I play this here, um, you can actually see pretty good evidence of what we've seen with Alex's experimental work and with George's modeling of the streamwise oriented vortical cells. To post-process this and actually produce the surface velocity vectors, we use an open source code called PIV Lab. So you can see the, the program does a first pass and looks at how these patterns of particles are moving between sequ sequential frames. You'll get a very, very good, solid, mean flow velocity on the surface. Field measurements inform on immediate state of a process, but they do not explain which way the process would evolve if main parameters change. In contrast, experiments on physical models allow monitoring the responses of a system to the controllable variation of parameters. However, to avoid the scaling problems that are typical for models, we carry out our experiments in the field. Alex and Tatiana make their field experiments in a side branch of the Taglamento River in Italy, where their German institute runs a field research station. The first step is the construction of a physical model made from wooden bars, metal mesh and plastic cover. Alex and Tatiana assemble 70 box cages. These are filled with gravel to form the walls of their in-stream physical model, which can be accurately placed and also adjusted in-stream. The model was built in a shallow side branch of the river, which during summer is separated from the main river by a gravel bar and is fed only by groundwater. This makes the hydraulic regime in this side channel stable. Two 10 metre long and 5 metre wide converging rectangular channels form a symmetric junction of the model, while the post confluence channel is 30 metres long and 10 metres wide. This setup gives the possibility to explore directly the effects of a junction angle by adjusting the inlet sections. Experiments started with a 70 degree confluence. The angle was then adjusted to 40 degrees and in the final test the model was transformed into two parallel streams. Another parameter which was varied in these experiments was the velocity ratio between merging flows. This was achieved by redirecting water from the left tributary to the right using a needle weir. Each experimental run consisted of measuring the turbulent flow with high temporal and spatial resolutions. An array of five acoustic Doppler velocimeters were employed for these measurements. A set of frames and mounts were also used to deploy the measuring devices. Besides detailed instrumental measurements of the mean flow and turbulence characteristics of each experimental run, Alex and Tatiana performed visualizations using a continuous injection of a solution of fluorescein dye. This tracer was continuously injected across the width of the left inlet channel. Video records from the mixing process were taken from a portable mast and also a drone quadcopter. These experiments yielded a unique data set which provided an interesting insight into the flow structures. An example of this is the helical secondary flow cells. Additionally to these field experiments, the German team also carried out field measurements at the confluence of the Ledger and Taglamento River. In these measurements, they employed the use of an acoustic droplet profile for measuring details of the flow structures of the mean flow. High resolution differential GPS sensors of the profiler allows for fast scanning of large river reaches. Fast development of computer technologies make it possible to perform high resolution numerical simulation of rivers. The research team from Iowa University applies so called detached large eddy simulations, otherwise known as DLES technique to study river problems. The DLES solves Navier Stokes equations for vortices which are smaller than the flow depth but larger in the sense of computational resources. This is uh, one of the basimetry data which we got from you, from one of your field experiments. And basically what we did in order to set up our numerical simulation was to take all this data, uh, smooth it a little bit, especially close to the banks, but retain all the large-scale basimetry features. We also got information from you on the bed roughness, on the discharges in the two uh, tributaries. And using this, we basically obtained the basimetry which we were going to, uh, to use in our numerical simulation. 
The results of numerical experiments with DLES are usually generalized with software animation technique. These animations demonstrate DLES results of the Kaskaskia Copper Slough Confluence, which is one of the field sites that the Illinois team uses. Additionally to the view from the surface, DLES gives the insight into the process over the whole flow depth. This animation shows that two types of turbulent structures dominate the process. Large vortices with the vertical axis of rotation and a system of twin counter-rotating elongated vertical tubes. I think this was a very exciting project. Uh, uh, maybe the most important thing is the fact that we got very good agreement between what we found using numerical simulations and what we found using uh, field experiments. Uh, in particular, I think this project has uh, shown and has proven the very important role which the streamwise-oriented vertical cells play at confluences with a concordant bed. And, for example, we were able to show that these uh, large-scale coherent structures are subject to bimodal oscillations, and do, due to those bimodal oscillations, their capacity to entrain sediment and to drive the formation of the scour hole at river confluences is so high. And this is something which was not uh, uh, shown before and for which there was only a little bit of uh, 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 indirect evidence from uh, field experiments. This project also illustrates the importance of cooperative work within modern science. Field measurements in natural rivers provide general knowledge about the process and datasets for testing numerical models. Experiments refine this knowledge by means of analysts and help to develop theories which can be further verified and extended by numerical simulations. Through intensive discussions during meetings and joint field campaigns, teams learn from each other and disseminate their knowledge through joint publications and leading scientific journals. Although the project is still running, the team has already achieved significant progress and gained fascinating new insights into how these complex environments are working. The team is continuing its research and will carry on striving for a better understanding of large natural confluence systems.